Hiking 40 miles through the Cairngorms National Park. Starting in Blair Atho and finishing in Aviemore, I'd be hiking through the heart of Scotland's largest national park. I'd be carrying only the essentials in my pack and drinking from mountain streams along the way. Deep glens, rocky mountains and peaceful forests are just a few highlights of the varied landscape. Heading off into remote and rugged wilderness was always going to be a challenge, but the difficult terrain and changeable weather made this route unique. I knew I was in for an adventure, so all I had to do was embrace the journey. I have just left a small town in the Scottish Highlands called Blair Atho and there's about 40 miles between me and another slightly bigger town called Aviemore. I'm going to be hiking 40 miles through the heart of the Cairngorms National Park. The Cairngorms National Park is Scotland's biggest. Believe it or not, it's about three times the size of the second biggest, the Loch Lomond and Trossachs. I've not done too much exploring in this area, so I'm really excited for this one. Come along for the adventure. Don't know if that's talking about our path, but I presume it is. That sounds pretty fun though. I'm in. This is actually my second attempt starting this walk. The first attempt, I was down on this path and it turns out I need to be up here on this bridge. So yeah, I've lost about a kilometre there. <laughs> Not a good start. That's obviously the gorge they were talking about. That is sick. Decent fall down there. I looked down into the gorge, watching the river flow by, and was happy to be taking the high road. The birds were chirping in the trees, and it made for a peaceful start to the walk. What is this here? Oh, that's pretty cool. Bit of history for you there. If you want to read that, maybe just pause it. I'm not going to be going to see it today, but you can probably actually see where I'm heading. I'm pretty much just following the river tilt, heading up Glen Tilt. Start off with. Because of the direction I'm doing this trail, it's pretty much just going to get more remote, more impressive. The landscape's going to become more rugged. The mountain's bigger. Basically just going to get better and better as I go on, which is by design. So I've started off really well. I'm in this forest and it's really peaceful, but it's just going to get better and better, more impressive the further I go into the Cairngorms. I followed a farm track rising up into Glen Till and past fields filled with sheep soaking up the morning sun. Look at this, amazing. Blue skies behind me. I'm so excited for this. Because the Cairngorms is so big, I wanted to get a route that sort of shows it off and, you know, just give me a taster of what the Cairngorms National Park is like. So that's why I went for this route today. I'm going to be heading through the Larry Gru probably tomorrow, which is apparently one of the nicest parts of the Cairngorms. So yeah, I feel like I'm going to see the really nice parts and then I can obviously come back and explore a bit more of it. I was just thinking about it and I feel like spring has to be the best time to hike in Scotland. Like, it's probably about 10 degrees Celsius right now, so it's the perfect temperature for walking, it's not too warm. I can just hear the birds singing all around me in the trees. Oh, it just, it feels amazing. And I feel like we get a little bit less rain in spring. And you also don't have to worry about midges, which are the worst. If you don't live in Scotland and you don't know what midges are, then consider yourself lucky there. <laughs> I'd rather fight a bear than, no, maybe not, but <laughs> midges are bad. They're so annoying. I need to pay attention, man. I just missed this turn off again. Somehow always miss the turn offs. I ventured deeper into the forest and couldn't help but notice the diversity of plant and tree life, divided only by the trail I was following. Oh wow. Look at that, it's really opened up. I think that might be Glen Tilt, just around there. So that's where I'm heading. That looks amazing. 
I'll be interested to see if I encounter much snow. There's not really any on the surrounding mountains right now, but I don't know if that's just because they're not high enough. But I've gone pretty light on water for this trip. I think I've only got about a litre, a litre and a half with me. And that's just because I know that there's a river down to my right. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear it roaring on. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have water sources the majority of this trip. So it just means uh, my bag's a little bit lighter. Don't need to carry quite as much. I do not have a clue what that is up there. There's like, it looks like targets and then numbers for each target. <laughs> I do not have a clue. Well, <laughs> I think I just found out what it is. I nearly had a heart attack there. It must be like air rifle practice or something like that. I'll try and get one of the shots on camera, but it's so cool. It just like reverberates down Glen Till. It's, it sounds so cool. There we go. I just jumped there again. Every time it happens, I jump a wee bit. That sounds pretty cool though. Here we go, what's this? Maybe this says something. All ah, right, okay. The Jubilee Rifle Range in Glen Till. The trail led me deeper into the glen, and I could now see down to the River Till, running along the glen floor. I don't think this route is signposted, but I have passed quite a few signposts, and they seem to be going like exactly where I need to go, so I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it's more popular than I think. I passed a few houses, and it felt like it may be the last sign of civilization I would see for a while. There were remains of old stone cottages scattered around the glen, left uninhabited for almost 300 years due to the highland clearances. Stocking up on water would be essential for this trip, so I made use of small streams I would pass on the trail. That is some of the freshest water I've ever tasted. Thank you very much stream, but I think I'm just going to walk and drink because it's starting to spit and Got a feeling the rain is going to be coming on pretty heavily soon. <laughs> this is quite a cool wee bit here. See what the view's like over here. I think, yeah, just one of the rivers that feeds into the river till. Quite a cool wee path though. The trail got narrower as I curved down into the glen. You could tell it had been a rainy couple of weeks prior, as the river was fully in spade. That was only a short wee bit of rain there. We can handle that, can't we? Do the clip in about two hours when I'm getting absolutely soaked and I start crying. <laughs> nah, but the temperature like dropped quite a bit and a bit of a breeze started to come on and that's normally some telltale signs that the rain is about to start, but literally lasted about five minutes. So I'm not gonna complain about that. Oh, I actually can't get past that. <laughs> I think I need to head up there, probably. I would, you know, just pop it over my shoulder and take it with me, but, you know, I don't have a saw with me. That's the only thing that's holding me back. <laughs> As I got deeper into the glen, I could now see the final signs of winter clinging on to the mountaintops. Seems like a bit of road walking right now. Well, it's like a four x four Land Rover track, but I'm not even bothered to be honest. I've had like a real urge to just walk really long distances recently. I don't know what it is. There's something just so simple yet satisfying about waking up and knowing that all you've got to do that day is just walk really far. And you just see so many different things along the way. It's really one of my favorite things to do. So simple. So easy, yet, well, it's not easy, but it's simple. But it's just so much fun. Glen Till isn't half impressive, it is absolutely enormous. You can just see all the way down, and it just looks so flat, which I'm happy about, no elevation. But yeah, it looks absolutely amazing. It's actually quite a lot of mountains around me. I think off to my left is like 
Cornic Lomain and Ben Gerag, which are two Monroes. And then I think off to my right is the Ben Glow range, which I think there's three Monroes in that. So yeah, I can't really see too many mountains right now, but they are there. They're just sort of hidden. So I'm sheltered in this glen. But this is amazing. A new place I've never been. And it feels good to be exploring. The glen widened and the landscape now started to feel more mountainous. I would continue to follow the river, passing by waterfalls flowing off the mountainside. I was now entering a management zone for Scotland's most popular species of deer. The area felt less remote, and as a result, the track I was following was in better condition. No way! I think that may be wild donkeys. Either that or they're just really small horses. That's so cool. Yeah, that is sick. I've never seen that before in my life. <laughs> they look so cool. Just chilling in the middle of nowhere. I continued to make good progress along the track but knew it was inevitable that another wave of rain would pass through the glen. Well, I'm about 10 miles in and I haven't taken any breaks yet. Just been quite content with just plugging away at the miles and getting my head down to be honest. The rain's been on and off and just as I go to take a break it comes on. But what a place to stop. Look at that waterfall. It's just so many of these scattered about. Absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna get some food now though, cause I'm quite hungry. Got a, a wee brownie, nice and healthy. I think I deserve it to be fair. That's so nice though, so relaxing. Well, that was delicious, but the rain is on quite heavily now. So I think I'm just gonna crack on, get a bit further on. Yeah, the views are just getting better and better as the further I go in. I mean, look at that glen behind me. That is absolutely beautiful. I think this is still Glen Till. That just shows the size of it. I feel like I've been in here like for the, the entirety of my life. But it's absolutely beautiful. I've noticed that it started to get a lot more rocky like and craggy the further I get in. So I'm not sure if that's what the Cairngorm Mountains are like. I know they're famous for their huge quarries and they're not obviously as jagged or you don't get the fine peaks you get on the west coast, they're more sort of rounded but they might still be really rocky. So impressive though. I thought I was heading up that for a second. Like you see that path on the left just sort of winding its way up but turns out my path was sort of just follows the river down there. I'm thankful for that. Good stuff. Down we head. The gloomy weather seemed to fit with the dramatic landscape, and the glen behind me looked like something straight off a postcard. Oh, the weather is just so changeable. It goes from being horrible to really sunny and warm. I need a drink. I feel like this is an elite play, but it's probably something everyone already does. I'm just like carrying my water filter and filling up the bag whenever I see like a, a wee stream or something like that. And then I've just got the actual filter bit here. And then I can just take straight from the filter instead of having to fill up my bottles every time. Right, Ooh, let's get a move on. Looks like it's turned into a wee trail now. That should be interesting. A bit different to the Land Rover track. Oh, that is so cool. Wow, that is beautiful. Nice wee waterfall there. Let's see if this bridge holds up. 
actually feels kind of sturdy, feels not too bad. Let's see the view. Wow, that is amazing. That was like a great spot to swim. Not for today though. The bridge was built in 1886 in memory of Francis John Bedford who passed away nearby. It gave an impressive view to the waterfall in the background. The rain came on heavier, so I was keen to make progress. Eventually it calmed down and the views opened up in the direction of the main Cairngorm mountain range. I just had the longest spell of consistent rain that I've had all day but luckily it's calmed down a bit now. I've actually reached the highest point of today. I think I'm up at about 530, 550 metres. So I think I'm pretty much gonna drop down uh, to where I'm thinking of camping. I'm not gonna drop down too much. I think it's probably about 450 metres, the place I've got an idea of camping at. So yeah, still pretty high. And then tomorrow, I think the highest point's about 850 metres. So you really do climb quite high, but when you're in the Cairngorms, you're just high up all the time. I can actually see some huge mountains in the distance. So I wonder if that's maybe into Ben McDewey, which is the second tallest mountain in the UK. So yeah, amazing views. They really have opened up now. That glen was quite like tight and narrow. And now it's just opened up and I can see so many mountains. Actually, it looks promising. There are some lighter skies in that direction. Might get it dry for a wee while. It feels like I am the only person on planet Earth right now. <laughs> it's such a weird feeling. But there's absolutely nobody around. I haven't seen anyone in hours. Pretty much since the start, since I left Blair Atho. And it's just nothing going on. I haven't even seen any wildlife recently. It's just so inhospitable because you're up so high. It's a cool feeling though. There's actually a ruin of a house over there. So people used to live here. You can see why they left though, there's just nothing here. Absolutely wild. I came across a fast flowing river, but with wet feet already, decided to just go for it. I spotted a shelter in the distance, so headed closer to see what it was. Must be Red House Bothy. I didn't even know there was a Bothy here, but it's by the MBA, so let's go and see what it's like. Whoa, it's pretty nice. It smells like a sauna in here. This must be new wood. That's really nice. Let's go and see the other room. I'll just shut that over right now. This is the bedroom. Oh yeah. They all look new. That's really nice. This is actually so nice. I did not know this was here. Oh, it's so annoying. Like, unfortunately, it's just not far enough on for me. I've still got another like three miles to do today. Or else I would stop here. There's actually a fire as well, like a fireplace, and someone's left loads of firewood. I just crossed three rivers to get here and my feet are soaking and freezing, so. A fire would be perfect, but I think I'm gonna to need to continue on. But what a place this is. Such a good body in such a good location. Feels bad to be leaving that nice warm body behind, but just have to come back another time. I can't believe how nice that is. I was reading the book in the Bothy and it was saying it was renovated in the pandemic. I'm not surprised, it is. they've done such a good job. It is proper nice in there. 100% coming back here to use that at some point. A few more miles for me to do though. Let's get it done. Well, I'm about 20 miles in and I've found a perfect bit of flat grass here, right next to something called White Bridge. The rain looks like it's just about to start pretty heavily, so I'm gonna try and get this up and get some shelter.
Oh man, it feels so good to be in the tent. That was a tough day. 20 pretty tough miles, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, the weather wasn't great at points, but it was still really enjoyable. And I managed to find a really good spot, nice flat grass with great views to the Cairngorms, which I'm heading to tomorrow. So I'm just going to have some dinner. It's about 7 o'clock and the sunset is, I think, half 8. I've got pakora for dinner. <laughs> I didn't bring my jet boil, but that there looks so nice. So I'm really excited to have those. And I'll see you guys again in the morning. The temperature dropped and the morning brought snow. So I didn't hang around and instead headed for the mountains. It is 7 o'clock in the morning and that's me up and hiking again, heading into the mountains. Really excited for today. That was a great spot I found last night and as always I've left no trace. But today should be the better of the two days. Yesterday was still great but today I'm heading through the Larry Gru, which is a huge mountain pass in the Cairngorms and I'd imagine it's just going to be even more impressive just huge mountains and there's actually quite a lot of snow cover there was quite a lot of snow last night and there was a little bit this morning so I'm pretty sure I'll be heading up into the snow because I'm heading up to about 800 meters the highest point today so yeah really excited for this one I'd be following the River Dee to start off the day I could now see deep into the Cairngorm mountain range and gazed upon the snow-covered mountains. I followed the blue skies as the clouds whizzed past the tops, and my surroundings felt more rugged than ever. I was now entering the Larry Gru, a mountain pass best known for its remote and exposed terrain. I've always thought that west is best when it comes to hiking in Scotland. But this has definitely changed my opinion. There's just something about the Cairngorms. Everything's just scaled up ten times. And the mountains are just as impressive. So much rockier than I thought they would be. You also just get a really feeling of sense of remoteness that you don't really get in places like Glencoe. I mean, just look at that. That is like something off a postcard. That is insane. I think that on the left must be the Devil's Point. Which means that must be Carnivame. And that must be Ben McDewey, absolutely covered in snow. <laughs> oh, that's a joke. Look at that view. I continued further into the Larry Gru and was taken back by the immensity of the mountains and scenery surrounding me. The place felt wild. It's hard to capture the scale of everything up here. It's just it's absolutely incredible. I mean, look at this. This must be the Larry Gru that I'm passing through right now. Either that or it's just up ahead. But it really is quite a harsh environment. Like we're mid-April, so we're well into spring. And there's still quite a lot of snow on the mountains. And it really is quite cold up here. Especially with that breeze. It's probably a wind chill. Probably into the negative degrees Celsius, I'd say. But it's an amazing place to walk through. And again, it's just me. I haven't seen anyone else. It just feels so remote, it feels like a different world. Oh wow, that is amazing, really opened up now. Can probably make out my path just ahead, I'm pretty much just winding my way through the glen and heading sort of in that direction. Looks really snowy around there and I think that's probably the highest point of today, just in between that there. Oh man, I'm about six or seven miles into today's journey so i think it's time for a break i need a seat and i'm pretty hungry as well what a viewpoint this is though i'll show you around but i can see the devil's point is right in front of me and it looks incredible it reminds me a bit of bucolet of moor and then karur bothy is just down to my right which i'd like to visit but it's not on my path unfortunately and i don't really have the time but what a place I didn't hang around for too long, and instead made my way further along the trail. Gaining elevation with every step, I could now see up to Britain's third highest mountain, Brayrook, 
standing at 1,296 metres above sea level. I'm making good progress through the Larry Gru, and it's absolutely incredible. I mean, look at that behind me. What a place. It's pretty tough walking. You're just going up and down, and it's sort of like really rocky. You don't ever get sort of flat sections where you can just build up a decent amount of speed. The weather's also been so changeable today. Like, the snow's coming on and off. That's why I've got the hat on now. But, to be honest, this is amazing. There's no place I'd rather be right now. Absolutely amazing. Just alone in the middle of nowhere. What a place. The weather was unpredictable this high in the mountains. Waves of snowstorms would pass through, and I had no option but to keep moving. The trail passed a few small lockins, and I could tell I was getting close to the top. Oh yes, I have reached the highest point of the trip at a height of 830 metres and I think we're still on the Larry Gru. So impressive. I've just got mountains to the left and right and they're so rocky and just covered in snow. I'm about 32 miles in so I've got another 8 miles and it's all downhill from here which I'm so happy about. So yeah, I'm not going to hang about because it's quite cold. I'm just going to get on with the remaining miles. I passed through a wave of heavy hail and emerged out the other side with a view down to the bottom of the glen. Those are some dark clouds up ahead. I think I've got another wave of rain about to hit me. Literally had all sorts today. Had some pretty heavy rain, pretty heavy snow and then that hail was just like smashing against my face, I literally could not see anything, it was so sore. I just had to get my head down and just keep going. But you can see the Larry grew up behind me now, left all the snow behind. And it won't be too long before I can see Aviemore. This is absolutely mental. I've never seen the weather change so often and so drastically. This is like full on white out conditions now. Absolutely love it. <laughs> I could see blue sky in the distance, which gave me some hope that I'd pass through the snow. I think that is Aviemore just up ahead. You can see there, so doesn't look too far now. I entered into Glenmore Forest and it felt good to be away from the harsh mountain weather. Oh, there's the first sign. Aviemore, this direction. That's promising. Not too long now. What an adventure it's been. Just from the small little bit that I've seen of this area, it has become one of my favorites already. I can't wait to come back. Cairngorms National Park, you've been amazing. I passed through the peaceful forest, enjoying the final miles of the trip. Before long I made it into Aviemore, just in time to get some well-deserved hot food before the bus back to the start point. <laughs> 